In this section right here, what we're going to be talking about is just a little bit about MySQL, what it is, how to install it. Logan, so tell us a little bit about MySQL. Yay. It is a database server. It's a, it's a database system that will uh, runs as a server, so you can connect to it from just about any source that can connect to a server. Okay. And um, in our case, that um, the eventual purpose of this is going to be allow PHP scripts to tie into this. Okay. For tonight, we're going to cover getting it installed and running on your system, and you're just going to run and get direct access to MySQL's database from your command line. Okay. And t talk directly with it. All right, great. Now, I did hear you say something that I want to go ahead and let everybody out there know, be aware of that they're going to hear MySQL mentioned a couple of different ways, okay? The yep. proper way of saying MySQL is like I just said it. Now, the way a lot of people like to call it is what, Logan? MySQL. That's right. SQL is generally called SQL. That's exactly. As structured query language is, usually, is, is called SQL. It's ingrained in my brain to the point that I didn't even realize I said the word SQL. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's okay. It'll it'll probably slip out of me too. I've done it for for a long time. But um, but as Logan said, what we're going to take a look at is how we can install it. Now, first things first, as Logan mentioned, the word database. For those of you out there that are completely new to this altogether, I Arr. guess it's uh, <laughs> well, okay. We'll just look at Kristen. <laughs> I guess it's good to first talk about what a database is. Okay. A database is nothing but a collection of, Logan? Tables. Okay, very good. So it's nothing but a collection of tables. A table is nothing but a collection of? Fields. Very good. And fields are a collection of? Data. Data. Okay. So, um, and we can also talk about the data being records as well. So inside a database, you'll find a bunch of tables. One given table has information that's being stored in us. That's the whole idea of a database, is just to store data, right? Sounds good. You sure? Yeah. Okay, what's the It makes sense to me. Database, data, storing. Okay, Great. okay. <laughs> okay, hooray. So first thing I'd like to show you is where do you go to get this? First of all, let's go ahead and come in here and open up Internet Explorer, and I'm going to go to www.mysql.com. And once you get to their site... A dolphin. Oh, you'll see a dolphin. <laughs> You know you're in the right place. Over on the left-hand side, we'll just come down to Downloads. Go ahead and click Downloads. And once you're onto the Downloads page, all you need to do, in this case, again, just like we did with PHP, we're installing this for Windows 2000, so it's on a Windows system. So we'll go ahead and come in here. And if you, let's see, we'll scroll down to Mirrors, no, MySQL. Sorry, mm. I can't get over that. Okay. MySQL database. What we're looking for is MySQL 3.23, stable release recommended. Okay, there are other releases that you can get that are in alpha state, okay, like version 4.0, and they're not exactly necessarily stable. So let's go ahead and go into MySQL 3.23. Okay, from in here, what we'll do is we'll just simply scroll down. There goes Linux if you're installing on a Linux system, but we are looking at installing on Windows. So come down into the Windows section, and you'll find the installation files. And here we go, MySQL 3.23.49 for Windows 95, 98, NT, 2000, and XP. And just click Download and save it to your computer, and we'll be ready to install. So since I've already got this downloaded. Good thing we have the buzz connection. Yeah, so here's the buzz connection. We'll just simply close that and Zoom. download. All right, so that was pretty quick, <laughs> and we've got our 12 meg file downloaded here in just a half a second. We'll go ahead and open up using WinZip. And I will basically inside here, for those of you that have installed a lot of software, you'll recognize setup.exe, et cetera. This is just a basic um, install shield package file ready to be installed. Go ahead and extract this out to, uh, let's just put it over on K drive, actually, up under temp and extract it. Okay, good enough. That was fast. And now let's go ahead and come up under K drive. There's temp. And we'll just simply come down and we'll run setup.exe. Now, this is going to go full screen, and we have no idea what this is actually going to look like. But we'll find out when we watch it back, won't we? Okay, we're now very full screen, and we can no longer see the area that we're recording in. So hopefully you'll be able to see 
what we see. Uh, right now we're looking at the welcome. Of course, it's suggesting that you have other things, everything else closed down before you proceed with the actual install. And we have about everything in the world running right now. This is going to cause us a problem when we get to the end. Um, when I say everything else in the world running, please remember that right now we are recording audio live, we're recording video live, and we have other things running as well. Live from New York. So next, and information, next. Where do you want to install it? Destination folder. I'd like to go ahead and change it over to my K drive. Again, we're using the K drive for this entire VTM. Uh, the default is up under my SQL. Tell it yes to go ahead and create that folder. Next. Uh, we're just going to go and do a typical install. Of course, you can do compact, and you can also do custom as well. We won't be getting into those on this VTM. And so now it is proceeding with the actual installation. And we'll probably see something really nasty in just a second. And here it comes. Installing lots of files, lots of files. Oh, and there it goes. Actually, the, uh, the little crash that you're looking at is it did not properly finish with creating the uninstall data that's required when you go and tell my C MySQL to be removed from your system. So no big deal, we'll just tell it OK. There we are, we're back, we can go ahead and come on up, take my temp folder, and I'll simply shift delete, yes. Chances are you probably won't get that error on your machine when you run it. Yeah. Because you won't have 10 million windows running. Of course, if you've got yeah everything in the entire world open, maybe so, but all right, so now that we've got all that installed, next thing we want to do is see how we can actually start it up. How do we get it started? So what I'm going to do is let's just go ahead and close this out. I have copied over my command prompt from up underneath my taskbar, start, program, accessories, etc. Go ahead and open up the command prompt. Let's drag this down over here. Working inside of MySQL is not the most exciting thing in the world. There are Windows uh, interfaces that you can work with, and we'll explore some of that in a later VTM. Right now I'm wanting to keep this very much to a command prompt because of those out there that may be using a Linux system, okay? So from here, let's just go ahead and jump over into K drive. And while, go ahead and do a directory listing and you'll see MySQL listed in there. So we're gonna simply do a change directory to MySQL. Yes, I know I can go ahead and go down the next step for those of you out there that are going, why doesn't he go to the bin folder also? You know what I'm talking about. Uh, I'm just, I like to go through this slowly for people that are completely new to working inside a command prompt and doing stuff like this. Like you, right, Kristen? Like me. <laughs> so now we are up underneath the folder, my SQL. I'm going to change the folder again. I'm going to step down one further and go up underneath the bin folder. Okay, so we're now up underneath the bin folder. And I'll go ahead and get a directory listing. Okay, so you'll see that there's a bunch of files inside here. And what we're interested in doing is running my SQL D. Okay, let's go ahead and just do it. My SQL D space dash dash stand alone. This is what actually fires the server off. Okay, so I'll go ahead and simply hit enter. And, and it goes blammo. Yep, my SQL is now running. It, it's not that it's locked up. It's just it's now running. In fact, I've got my task manager open right here. And if we take a look inside my task manager, uh, let's see, there she is right there, my SQL D. Okay, so we've now got it running. Even if I come in here, take my command prompt, and close that window down, and it's still running right there. Okay, let's go ahead and move this out of the way, even though I shouldn't have closed the command prompt down because I was going to show a couple more things before nope. we finish. <laughs> that command prompt's dedicated to my SQL. Oh, yeah, that's right. We, we would have been able to type in. Absolutely. Good call. What? We would have. We would have needed a new one anyways. That command prompt became dedicated to MySQL D. Oh, okay. So I couldn't have used it anyways. So I'm just going to go ahead and jump back over to K Drive and we'll CD backslash to MySQL uh, bin folder. And now what we want to do is just real quickly show you two other things in this section. And that's going to pretty much conclude everything we want to talk about for downloading it and getting it installed on your Windows system. So right here, next thing I want to do is how can we see that it's running? Well, you saw up under the Windows Task Manager, not a problem. We also can use the MySQL admin command. So I'll come in here or executable file, MySQL admin, okay, space status. Okay, and it tells us uptime 83, threads 1, questions 1, blah, 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 a bunch of information. If you see this right here, it's running. It's just that simple. Now, how can we actually shut the process down? Of course, you could go and forcibly do it through your Windows Task Manager, or we can simply use my SQL admin space shut 
down. Okay, go ahead, push that in there. If I pull my Windows Task Manager back over here and we look, we no longer see MySQL D running or MySQL D. Okay, so let me go ahead and move that back out of the way. And again, I'll go ahead and hit the up arrow twice. So there we are looking at MySQL admin status. Remember, we used status a minute ago just to find out if it was actually up and running. Mm -hmm. If I run it now, what do you think is going to happen? It's going to go back up. No, it's going to say it's off. Okay, so we run it. It takes a second. gives us a nice dirty little beep, and it tells us it cannot connect to the <laughs> server, local host, <laughs> failed, beep. and it's not up and running. Okay? So this section right here is just simply about going out on the Internet, where their website's located. There's a bunch of great information over there. Where do you actually find the file to download it? Download it to your computer. Then we saw how we could simply extract it out to a temp folder, run the setup.exe file, walk through the couple little questions it has to ask. Once we're done with that, then we simply saw how we could go in there, actually fire up a command prompt. That would be this guy right here. And then from inside the command prompt, how we could use MySQLD dash dash standalone to actually start up the MySQL or MySQL engine. And then we closed that window down. Then we saw how we could use MySQL admin to look at status and to shut it down. Okay? So is this pretty much everything we wanted to talk about in this section here? Yes, it does. We've got MySQL up and running at this point. And okay. And can get it running. So uh, with that out of the way, I guess what I can do one last time, just hit up arrow. Uh, actually, no, we'll just go ahead and it's not on this one here. MySQLD dash dash stand alone. And we'll go ahead and close this window out. What we did is we just made sure we ended this section with it actually up and running. Okay? So that's everything we need to do here. Thanks, everyone. Bye.